Everyone who's not delusional or lying agrees that Biden kicked Trump's ass in this election. But there's less agreement about who deserves credit for that victory. Black people and what it says about our political landscape going forward. Here to talk more about that is journalist, author, and host of Zerlina on Peacock, Zerlina Maxwell. Welcome, Zerlina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's so great to see you. Um, I wanted to ask you, what the hell is Trump actually doing, you know? And from your perspective, what's going on in the minds of these Republicans who think they can wish away the results of an election like they, they try to wish away COVID? Yeah, I don't know what Trump is doing. I'm never sure what he's doing. I, I don't think that he is somebody who thinks things all the way through or has a strategy. Right. Republicans, though, are just trying to get their Republican base um, engaged through January in the Georgia runoff. So you think Mitch McConnell is really playing Georgia right now? He's really focused on those Senate seats and that the other Republicans are in line with him? Or do you think there's a they think there's a chance that something actually may happen and some people want to make sure they're on that Trump boat? Well, I think what they learned from this election is that sticking close with Trump was the smart play because a lot yeah. of Republicans won their elections. But I don't think that they think they're going to pull this off. The reason I know that is because they have hired terrible lawyers yes. uh, to file frivolous lawsuits that are getting thrown out of court. I think we're up to 12 that have been thrown out uh, since last wow. week. So they're not picking the best. They're not finding the best attorneys to go in and argue based on evidence. I mean, literally, there was a case where somebody said, well, I saw somebody in a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and I was scared. That that was the, the legal claim. Wow. Or, or another person who said, well, I saw people who looked like they were in the military and they seemed to be voting for Joe Biden. And that seemed <laughs> yeah. unusual. Um, you know, so it was fraud. So so these claims are not, they're, they're not the strongest they could be. It really is surreal, you know, and I don't like uh, when they're focusing on these urban areas that have apparently stolen the election. Like, what does that signal to you? Because I know exactly what it signals to me. They don't like when black people get to vote. Right. So when they're saying, you know, urban areas, somehow that was fraudulent, what they're really saying is that it really is, it's, it stinks that our voter suppression tactics didn't work well enough um, because they, they're trying their very best. Um, to make sure black people cannot participate. Yeah. But I think that what we've shown, my co-host um, on my radio show, Signal Boost on Sirius XM, uh -huh. she always says that the long lines of black and brown people waiting to vote are both a sign of resilience and a completely broken system. So, it, you know, I think black people who are willing to to do that understand that they're trying to take our rights away mm -hmm. because they're powerful. Our votes are powerful. That's why they're trying so hard. Just strip that right away. Yeah, it's why they tried to suppress our votes from the beginning of when we could mm -hmm. actually vote, you know, because they know how powerful exactly. that voting block is. You know, what was interesting, a part of Biden's supposed appeal as a candidate was uh, people thought the way he would appeal to that white working class voter. You know, I wanted to ask you, should we be trying that hard to appeal to that voter? Like, why are we trying so hard to do that? Is, is that a winning strategy? No, it's not a winning strategy. And my entire book, The End of White Politics, is about the fact that we have to let go of the white working class voter sort of myth that, uh -huh. you know, if we win back those moderate or independents, um, because we picture in our head a fairly reasonable white person when we say that, um, that, you know, that's that's the path to a winning coalition. But mm -hmm. it is not. White Americans, um, a majority of white Americans have voted Republican always. Men and women. Right. In 2016, 53 percent of white women voted for Donald Trump. That was not unusual. Yeah. That was surprising because Hillary Clinton is herself a white woman. But it wasn't unusual. Fifty six percent of white women voted for Mitt Romney. And, you know, you can go down the line. Mm -hmm. So, no, we should not be going after that, you know, working class white male voter, which is what people really mean when they say working class voter. Um, and we should go towards building the coalition with a base of black women because 91% of us showed up and voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to save the democracy. Um, and it should continue on with other groups uh, that generally show up and support um, the Democratic Party. That's mm -hmm. that's if you why would you go after people who would believe that Kamala Harris is a socialist? I don't think that that is a Democrat. That's not a that's not your voter. Yeah. Why is there a disconnect with working class? Like 
how come people don't talk about the black working class? As, mm-hmm. I mean, they make it seem like black people don't work, you know, or, right. or the brown working class. You know, they're, the working class, there were a lot of people, not just white working class. Why aren't they included in the talk of these types of coalitions? Because we don't nuance anything that's not white people. Mm-hmm. So what we do is, well, well, I mean, you know, when we're talking right. about elections, we're like white working class voters, white voters without a college degree, single yeah. white women, white women, soccer moms, you know, uh, security moms. They've had every sort of uh, euphemism for white woman or white person. Um, but you never hear, to your point about working class black voters, mm. you never hear college ed- educated black women either. But I hear college educated white voters all the time. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting that. We just don't get the privilege of having that nuance and the fact that people were shocked that certain uh, Latino voters in Florida would different would vote differently than Latino voters in Arizona, even though they're from different countries. Like it's it's actually quite silly um, in the way that we don't allow voters of color to have that nuance and break them down into actual lived experiences mm-hmm. in how we actually are. Is part of that. Uh, a little bit on the black vote itself. I mean, so much of it is given to the Democratic Party. I remember years ago, Whoopi Goldberg gave me this book uh, that was, uh, it was the Negro Yearbook from like 1911. And there was a letter at the end of it uh, pleading with black people not to give all their support to one party. And then it was the Republican Party, you know. Mm -hmm. Should the black vote be up for sale? Should Should it be something where it's like, look, if you're not gonna pay attention to our needs, we may have to change who we're gonna think about. Or do you think, the black issue should be part of the progressive coalition. Oh, the black issues definitely should be part of the progressive coalition. Number one, because if you tackle many of the systemic problems that black people face, you fix it for everybody. Because we're at we're at the bottom of most of those uh, right. indicators in terms of outcomes, yeah. right? So I think if you if you if you are helping uh, black women, you are likely helping a lot a lot of other groups of people right. um, by design. But I think we need targeted policies. So I'm not saying that black people should not withhold their support for for a particular party if that party is not um, providing those solutions and actually getting ish done. Um, but I think in this election, it was just a little bit different. Yeah. Right. This election was literally like if black people did not show up for Joe Biden the democracy might have been over. Yes. So I feel like, you know, I, I feel like in this election, it was like vote for which side that has a black woman on the ticket or vote for somebody that, you know, refers to black women as dogs. It's not really that difficult. Do you have hope that this Trump stuff is going to go away soon? Or do you think we're going to see, is this going to be played out for a long time until like as long as it can? I'm not sure because I I just find his lawsuits to be so weak that, you know, it could be a couple of days from now where they just like give up. Right. I don't think that Donald Trump will ever concede this election. Um, He may go on a tour, more super spreader event tour uh, where he's doing speeches to applause about how he really won the election. And that's like he goes on his like, you know, farewell tour for the rest of his life Um, or, or he gets prosecuted. I don't know which. Both are likely to happen, so <laughs> yes. we're, we're not sure. Maybe both, but yeah, we're going to transition and get a new president on January 20th. That's the law. The key card is turned off. Exactly. <laughs> yes, the key card is turned off. And let's yeah. let's keep that key card turned off for as long as we can. Zerlina, thank you so much for joining us. 